The following is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. I've been to the Arctic a number of times. I first went in 1992, and it was a fantastic experience. I became enamored of the Arctic ecosystem on that cruise. My next cruise to the Arctic is a very special one. We'll be going out at the beginning of November on the U.S. Coast Guard Katerhili, an icebreaker, to study the Bering and Chukchi Seas during early winter. To our knowledge, no one has done this before. People have studied the Arctic ecosystem in winter from ice camps or from ships frozen into the ice. But in this expedition, we're going to go out in a ship and move around. Now, the reason we're so curious is because we really don't know what's going on with the biology and with the physics, with the water temperature during this period of time. We're trying to understand this ecosystem and how it might respond to physical changes associated with climate change, such as changes in sea ice extent or water temperature. But we have no idea what happens in the winter. It's important to understand the Arctic ecosystem because, first of all, it's one of the least well understood ecosystems on Earth. Right now, it's vulnerable because we're seeing changes in the Arctic ecosystem. And we don't really understand how the biological environment of the ecosystem is going to change because of those physical changes. The extent of the ocean that's covered by sea ice every summer is getting smaller and smaller almost every year. So the reduction in sea ice can have critical consequences to the animals and plants that depend on the sea ice itself or that live underneath the sea ice. There are small plants that grow in the crevices on the underside of the sea ice. There's invertebrates like copepods and amphipods that feed on those, those small plants. And then there's fish, arctic cod, that feed on those invertebrates. These fish, in turn, are important food for the seals that then are eaten by the very visible polar bear. So why do we wonder about the large copepods? Well, copepods of the genus Calanus, they spend the productive part of the year when there's food available, when the, the algae plants are growing in the water column, they spend that time of the year near the surface feeding on, on phytoplankton and on much smaller plankton. And then when production decreases and it becomes winter, these large copepods, the calanus, migrate down to depth, to about 200 meters usually, and they spend the winter in a sort of suspended animation phase until the next spring when conditions are favorable again, and then they sort of wake up and migrate back up to the surface. But the Bering Sea and the Chukchi Sea these are vast areas, and they're shallow. The Chukchi Sea is probably 50 meters max in depth. The Bering Sea, much of it is less than 100 meters. So what are these animals doing? Do they spend the winter, do they go down near the seafloor? Or do they go down and they can't get deep enough, so they die off? Or do they go down and get consumed by all the incredible benthic organisms that live in these seas on the seafloor? People have been able to study the ecosystem of the Arctic out in the deep water before, but nobody's been able to go out and do this kind of work in the Chukchi Sea. We're going in November and December, so sea ice will be there. It will be great fun to go crunching through it, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. The length of day, well, we're all used to working at night anyway, so it's just going to be longer, and we just have to um, Try not to get too depressed by the lack of sunlight. But the cold, it's going to be very cold. So we have to dress very warmly, and we have a problem with things freezing when we bring them out of the, out of the water. This is a big ship, and there's going to be probably 130 to 140 people on board. We're going out for 44 days, but this crew has been gone from Seattle since, I think, June. So they have a, a big morale team on board to try to keep people's spirits up and, and you know, find interesting things to do. I have to say I'm very grateful to the crew for, um, for going on this cruise. One of our primary instruments will be what we call the CTD. This is really 
a set of sensors mounted on a big frame with some big plastic bottles on it. And the sensors measure the temperature and the salinity, the dissolved oxygen content of the water, and we'll be using what's called a video plankton recorder. It's basically an underwater microscope, and there's a camera on this microscope, so we can tell what animal is at what depth. How do we collect the zooplankton? Well, we collect them with nets and put them in a jar and preserve them. Then we'll bring them back and they will be counted. And from that, we'll have an understanding of what the zooplankton community looks like. This cruise is a unique opportunity. It, this might be the most important and interesting cruise of my career, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. I've never been to a place where so little is known. To learn more about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.